Hi, this is artist Yvette Michelle. Thanks for joining me on my journey as I create the Roadrunner. I have been creating this painting on Periscope for several weeks. This peacock is a part of a series called the St. Croix King. He's an actual living bird in the wild. He taught me freedom. As big as the bird, so is this oil painting, sizing at 40 inches by 80 inches. Thanks, Ed, at Art Attack for stretching the canvas for me. Thank you to all who have tuned in and given me hearts. I love the love, and the hearts are an incentive to keep painting live. Good afternoon. How are you? Who do we have with me today as I'm getting ready to paint? Can you give me some hearts and tell me where you're coming from? Going. <laughs> so today I'm still working on my peacock. And um, he's fairly large. I can scoot you back just a little bit so you can see what's happening. There's the head. Here's the body. And he's quite long. He goes all the way down there. He's 80 inches. And so what I'm going to do is start working on some more of him that I need to get done because I like to submit them into um, a uh, gallery exhibition so gotta get my wheels locked here so that you can see and I'm still working on this head area here so I'm gonna go in here and I want to put a little lighter color here and then I want to put the same kind of color in here and a darker color into there and I'm gonna use a cold medium wax to help me with that so that I get some really great texture because if I zoom in you'll see just a little bit of those lines so you can see this actually like his hair. So here we go. And I am using Gamlin Code Medium Wax and a palette knife. I'm going to take a little bit and put it onto my actual palette itself. I use a glass to do so. And I want to start in this area here. And I found this wonderful, intense turquoise from Charbon. I love, love, love Charbon paint. So we're going to put a little bit of that onto my palette. It's a nice, brighter blue than what's inside of here, which is that cobalt. And then we're going to take a little bit of our medium and mix it in to ensure that the cold wax doesn't look so cold. This isn't actually linseed oil, so I'm going to find something else to do so. And we need something that's going to give it a little viscosity for us. Uh, found some walnut oil. So I'm going to use this walnut oil mixed in with the cold medium wax and that blue. I have a nice little porcelain bowl to do that in. I'm throwing that in. I'm going to put in my cold medium wax, put in a tad bit of that blue into this receptacle here. And we're going to get it all mixed. So we got a nice looking paste. And we're going to add it into this area here. Actually, I'm going to put smooth that on a little bit with the brush and then come back and scratch it. So I'm going to go ahead and smooth that out. You see it gives us a nice light layer over the blue layer that we already had there, the turquoise blue. It's almost like a sky blue that we're adding here. Go ahead and add that in. Hey, the Jazzy One. Good to see you. Detroit is in the house. And we are working here today on Mr. Peacock because we are going to enter him into a themed event called Big, so everybody has to wish me luck that he gets in. And so what I'm doing is I'm doing um, a cold pressed um, uh, medium to thicken up the paint to give us lots of texture. 
and then I am doing a little bit of linseed oil, in, actually walnut oil in with it because I love walnut oil. Turn it so you can see me too. Here I am. And so I'm adding some in there. Much success. Yes, thank you. I need success. I need hearts for the art. So here we go. We're going to get this going here. Get it moving. And uh, I decided to bring a lighter blue into his actual coat. To define it. And this piece is 40 inches by 80 inches. And I've used just a little bit of cold wax medium from Gamlin to help me with thickening this up some. And I actually mix it in with the oil itself and the oil paint itself, which I found this beautiful blue from the Charbon Company. I love Charbon paint. And uh, decided to give it a try. Went out and found some really nice colors. This is the blue that we're using. It is called Intense Turquoise. So we're going to kind of intense him down here on his body, not leave it white because he's not really white down there. Fix up his legs a little. I'm going to come up a little close to his face. This part up in here, you can't see it, is where his eyes would be. So I'm just going to give his head a little bit of this blue. Um, his head isn't totally blue. Around here in the eye pocket, he has kind of like a, almost like a bandit. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of blue here to start the coloring for him. So that I can work on that section a little bit later. So it'll be nice and dry and I'll have color already in there. Let's turn them out with. And we're going to move back just a little. I'm going to bring it back a little bit further. Then you'll be able to see. There we go. Got both pieces in. And I'm really liking what that's doing. I also have, that was a brilliant turquoise. I also have what they call a fatal turquoise, which I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit on my palette and give it a little mix with this to see what we can get just to give me some little darker edges in here there we go nice shadows help us out here the legs and inside of here i'm feeling good about that that's mixing well for me. Don't want to mess it up. And we need a little bit of a darker blue as well. More of a blue blue to blend in with that. Look at that here. And I'm gonna take start taking some shorter strokes so that I can get the feathering to start. A few little shorter strokes. Oh, that that is too dark. So when we get into those kinds of things, where we made something too dark, we need to wipe off our brushes. And I actually need some wipes. So let's see. Do I have some down here? And the answer would be no. So hold on, everybody. Sorry, can you give me the wipes from under the um, kitchen cabinet, please? Okay, help is on the way, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry to disappear like that, but I got a little bit too dark right here. Thank you. We've got 
God wipes. Thank you, Zakari. Don't tell me your name. She's shy, everybody. Okay, she was playing tennis and she's gonna go back and play more tennis. All right, that looks good to me. Hey, Denise, where are you coming from? What city are you in? Can you tell me? Oh, thank you for the hearts. I love hearts for my art. Can you tell me what's... Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Can you tell me what city you're from, Denise? I always like to know where people are at on the map. Don't need to know the exact location, but the city or the state or something like that helps me out. So you see, if I'm making these quick, wispy strokes, it's starting to help define uh, feathers here. And I want that line up there to be just a tad bit darker. Uh, I'm also wanting to put purple into here. Thank you for the hearts, uh, jazzy one. I'm going to put purple up into here and blend it so that eventually I can round out to this magenta. But I think his body is coming along just great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jazzy One. I'm really, I'm really appreciating what's going on with him here. So I'm going to take, I found a beautiful purple today. It's called Cobalt Violet. And so this is a Cobalt Blue, so I thought it would be the perfect complement. So I'm going to take this. See if we can get it open there. And I'm gonna start to add it in here in some big clumps. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my pout knife and I'm gonna start to scratch it in. I need to put this other stuff down so I can scratch it properly. And Bobby mix it in with the blue. And I am on canvas and not on board. Um, I'm going over the blue just a little bit so that the purple can start to blend. I'm just going to bring it down into that turquoise area as well. It's just really kind of scratching the purple in. And you see there's bits of purple that was here, so I want to complement it. So. See here that it there's a deeper part purple that's there. And then we're doing this. There we go. Oh, I'm really loving this. So let me bring it in. Bring it up. Need a little more purples here. Can <laughs> you like it? Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Jazzy One. to my palette. I'm pretty much a purist when it comes down to the color. I don't necessarily like to change them. I like to buy them the way that the manufacturer intended them to be mixed and use them that way. Do a little scratch out here. Getting some purples down there. And then I'll come back and get some more blues mixed in with that purple. And I'm not too much worried about what's happening with that eye um, because the feathers kind of do what they do. And so that's why we did the eye first and then as, a, as the feathers come over the top of it, it's okay. Hopefully it'll be as amazing as I'm imagining it to come out to be. That bright pink is just absolutely wonderful inside of there. And that purple inside of here needs to kind of be this purple that I got here. So I'm going to pick up a brush and put 
go ahead and fill that in while I have the opportunity. We're going to finish filling in the rest of these eyes. I don't feel like really good about this purple. I think it's absolutely magnificent. And these eyes are just a little bit dull for me, so I'm kind of giving them a little brightening up. This purple is much more vibrant and giving them a thicker base. I don't want all the eyes to be purple, so I'm actually going to make some of them a brighter green and maybe even some orange ones because that's the way I saw it when I was observing this peacock. I didn't actually see it the way that he is probably actually colored, so I'm actually going to change. I'm not going to make all the eyes the same. I'm going to change them up. So we're just giving it a nice purple inside of here inside the ones that were already done that way and then the rest of these i'm going to change them out and i am using a oh it looks like maybe like a number two deep brown in order to fill those sections in this color seems to have fallen in and so has this one so i want to give them um, a deeper line I'm also still trying to work on this purple going out, so I'm going to go back to that and work it in. blowing wild in the wind because that's the way he was kind of crossing the road he's running actually throughout the from the road so I'm actually making sure that his feathers are blowing with the wind off the eye and each one of these eyes usually the feathers are kind of coming off and they're wispy so that's why I'm doing a little scratch into the surface itself Keep going here. So I still have definition in the eye itself around there. And that color actually is um, a dionized purple. It's very, very deep, deep, deep purple. And it only went through its first round of um, paint, so it's not exact the way I should be able to see it. And so you can see that even just putting a little bit of oil on there kind of revives it. And this painting has kind of been sitting and drying a little bit for the past two weeks, I want to say. It's probably the last time that I periscope with it. And um, so you can see just even picking up just a little bit of oil helps revive that color some and helps me define what's happening with that eye. So I'm going to keep going here. 
because I want this blue to fade in. And I'm going to come back and pick up some more of that blue to really get it to mix well. Um, and just so that you don't know, thank you for the hearts. My name is Artist Yvette Michelle, and I'm here in South Florida, in Fort Lauderdale. And this is one of my passions, and I love to be able to paint live for you guys. And Certainly give me hearts for the art if you like what's going on here. It's a nice Sunday evening. We've been getting lots of rain here. Hey, Cat Dean. We've been getting lots of rain here. And so somebody said, yeah, during hurricane season is probably the best time to start painting. Well, this thing, hey, this thing is due in about a month for a exhibition called Big. So I said, I better get to scratching on it now, as opposed to waiting. So we're actually trying to get these lines in now, and uh, later I'll come back with a little bit of an agent to um, dry it so that it's dry enough to touch to be handled. But oil paintings take a year to dry, totally. Sometimes I have to be months and months out, but this one has got the majority of the lines and everything in, so I think it's a great, a great candidate for, um, for that particular exhibition called Big. I just got to find a big enough. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you about for the compliments of my hat. I just got to find a vehicle big enough to move this Joker. It is 40 inches by 80 inches. And uh, I need a vehicle big enough. So there's a bunch of artists that are saying, hey, we need to have a gigantic car to move all of our stuff for big. So perhaps we'll carpool it. Save us some money. Talk to one artist and he says, yes, let's share the vehicle. And that way we're not all out renting cars and run the rental car people out of big vans. And then they're trying to figure out what the heck happened. Those artists who wanted to paint big. Gotta always make sure I put the caps back on. Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate it, Jazzy One. I'm gonna get a little bit of this. Uh, I don't know if I want the primary magenta, but I think I want to go to Charvin's Carmen Light, is kind of a, a nice deep red. Put the blues here. Oh, and if you just heard a big clunk. It's because I use glass to as my um, palette. Didn't mean to clink it with that porcelain, but I use the glass because I can control the getting the paint off when I'm ready to change it out. And it has a nice gray base. I found this wonderful table, and then I painted the bottom of it gray. And then the top of it is clear, and then you're able to see your colors better because all the colors show up more true on a gray base than they do on anything else. So we're going to try a little bit of the Carmen Lake mixed in with this purple. And keep pulling it down just so that we get a nice mix of things happening here. into the pink family so I'm going to let that happen just a little bit and some people actually call that kind of spicing um, where you get these opposite colors so I'm just going to pull this as much as I possibly can and let it live there I don't believe that there's too many mistakes that you can make I'm just going to go ahead and scratch that in and I'm going to look more for this kind of pinkish color a little bit of opera and sometimes when my things get too tight I need to open them with pliers so we gotta get this one open put a little bit of this brighter pink into the mix see how that helps us is my mic out on it sounds louder when I look at the screen yeah my mic is on let's see what's happening did it get turned down invariably 
Can you hear me now? Is that better? Let's see what's going on. Power's on. Is it better, Cat? Kathleen, is it better now? The mic is definitely on. Can everybody hear me okay? Should I take the mics off? The mic is definitely on. Oh yes, okay, great. All right. So we're gonna try a little more of this. I'm always competing with the um, background noise of the, the air condition system. So I'm just gonna bring this in just a little bit so you can see kind of what's happening here. Do a little bit of a mix. That to be more feather like than a paint stroke, so I just kind of quickly pull when I'm doing this. And I'm going to keep touching back up in the area that I was in just so that it blends itself down. And as you can see, I have some lines that are already there that were this dionized purple. And I'll come back and pick those back up a little later time. And right now I'm just trying to get some good color going here. I'll pick up a little more purple. Went to the paint store today. They had a wonderful deal on Charvin. I was so happy. Charvin is some of the best paint you could possibly buy. So excited about that. Kind of tie dye in itself, so I'm just gonna pick it back up so that it will start to mix it, mix the colors with, with itself. The cool thing with using this palette knife is that it helps define all of the feather action inside there. This is a nice orange, that's a nice purple, it's got a nice lemon yellow there, so I want to go back and kind of work these to the coloring that I'm looking for so that it's not harder for me later. So I have a lemon yellow that I like to do and I got some other ones back there that should be in the lemon yellow family. I'm a big fan of um, filberts and flats so using the flat brush to get inside of this one because it's easy to work on right now. I just filled in that purple, so I'm just going to put a little bit, of, a little bit more of this yellow in. Give us some great definition. And I'm happy with that because I can come back and further define that eye, but I wanted that yellow to brighten up. And there's some more yellows back over in there that I can put some paint into. Feel good about it. Alrighty, this is a darker yellow and it lost its definition in these lines here. So that Carmen Lake, because it's darker, probably will look great right there. So I'm going to pick it, pick that. I want the eyes to be defined, but I don't necessarily want them to be outlined. I just like to have the colors kind of transition into one into the other. So that if you fixated your eyes on it, that you could just go into a calm. You know, it's, it's all about peace and having some, some calmness. So, what I want to do is I want to take this color that's here and bounce it over there. I'm going to pick up one other brush for the reds. Got a nice round number six here. So we're picking up a little bit of red here. We're just going to go right here where it wasn't defined and make that eye kind of pop itself out. I'm loving the pink that's underneath, and so I'm not going to change anything there. So I'm just going to pick this up a little bit. And I'm very, very happy with this result, that it's a nice dark red going around that, and it's making that eye actually come out very, very nice. And I don't care that I'm going over the top of the other eye, because this is a smaller eye, so I think it kind of looks good. I think that's much better. And this eye right here is very orange and it's running into the pink. But maybe I can do a, a darker orange there. There's this really cool orange that's out right now that's hot that everybody loves. That maybe I'll probably use that um, in there instead. I have lots and lots of paints that are on a cart. 
flip you around so you can see where I'm going. See this cart here. I gotta hop over there. I'm making everything a little tight so that I can paint in front of you guys. It's usually not this tight for me, but so I can get the right colors going here. This really cool cool. Ah, here it is. This is it. This is the nice dark orange. So I'm going to come back over to our painting here and keep it moving. So let me bring you in a little closer so you can see. Now you can see those colors a little bit better. And this one is a little tight for me too. So back to the pliers again in order to get this going. So we are working on our palette here. There we go. It's a nice dark orange, just like even this color. And so I want to make it just a little bit darker than what's here. Those two colors are the same, but I want that to pop out. So I'm going to take a little bit of that red that we were using from before and mix it with a, a bit of that orange and just give it a more of a ready orange color. Let's see here. Get a different knife to do that. It's got a little purple popping in. But uh, there we go. Nice darker color. They're not quite red, but not quite the orange orange. So making it a little bit deeper. And. I need to get uh, my brush cleaned off a little bit. I use wipes to do some. Let's get this wipe. And we're going to go here and just bring that out nice. Not quite as dark as this, not quite as bright as that, not quite bright as what it's there. So that really came out really good for me. So I'm quite happy with that result. Now this pink, I really do want it to stay that pink, so I'm going to mix it with that cold medium wax in order to stretch that pink. And it's a very uh, bright pink, and it's very hard to, to find that pink. I actually have to sometimes special order it, so we're going to keep that bright pink like it is. I'm really liking what happened here with the transition between the blue and the purple and the red. That blue came out fabulous. And I'm not quite, oh yeah, that's the Dionize blue. This uh, turquoise blue it is. So I'm going to take a um, little more of that, mix it down, and to wipe our palette knives off to keep them clean in order for them to be in good working order. Take a little bit of that, mix it in with this cold wax medium. Let's bring that down a little. Coming back in here, I'm going to bring it back a little just to see, see what I'm doing. Down here where his legs were, we went with a darker blue to give it a little bit of shade, but we also got to give it some texture um, inside. So that's why I'm using this palette knife to do so. Scratch a little more feathers in. Nice blue in here. Be able to do that with. And now our transition is better from that darker blue to this turquoise blue that's inside of here. And it's giving him the actual feather action that I was looking for. Put some more on here. Loving what's happening with that. Just going to keep on with that blue. I love that blue that I just got. You just have to keep kind of scratching away for you to get what it is you're looking for. And you see, that's a different kind of purple than that purple, and so I kind of need to do some good blending there to make that transition happen. So I'm going to 
pick up a little bit of this phthalo again inside of here to give us a nice darker shadow. Scratch it up. And then this is actually like a, the purple transitioning in. So I'm going to pick up my palette knife that I was using for the purple and bring it over here. Start to scratch some of it in so that it will start to blend in with these, this red and then also with this blue. bringing this red down just a little bit to mix in with it. So I can actually pick up some of the color from the color that I actually had and then just keep working on these feathers. And there is a way to paint the feathers as well, but it's a lot of painting, so that's why I'm doing it with palette knife because I like the way that it actually looks and feels to the touch like this one is dry right here and I love the way that it feels it's just like real feathers so I'm very happy and pleased with that so I'm going to keep doing this with the palette knife in these areas to really give me the feeling that I was looking for of the wind blowing as you can see just pull a little bit to get more drama more drama with him. I'm really happy with what's going on here and how that defined itself in this wing base. Um, the blues, I need to have a little more blue. I'm loving the way that this is looking on the screen in terms of its beginning of its transition. And what I probably need to do is to pull a little more of this purple into that blue feathering section in order to um, make it blend a little bit better. So it looks like there's a nice hard line here and it's not actually how uh, the peacock, um, how I viewed him. So I'm just going to bring a little bit more of this in to the blue area so that that line is not so hard uh, between the blue and the purple. Give it an easier blending um, status here. There we are. Get a little more. The one thing that I learned looking at peacocks is that almost all the colors kind of show up in many different spaces. Uh, as they're turning, when they're doing the mating dance, you'll see their colors um, changing. So for me he he was very it was very tremendous watching him. And after he finished showing me the whole entire dance, then he kind of took a little road trip across the the way and went back into his home in the wild and so that's why I call him the road runner. He only came out for a little while to show off and I fed him some popcorn and he gave me an appreciation to answer that. So, just bringing a little bit of some of these other colors up in here, up in the, into this blue part. Because as he turned for me, it was a spectacular event. I'm just going to give it a little more here. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm happy with that. And I'm happy with how it came down inside of here. And what's going on there. So this line is more of a solid purple. So we got some solid lines running as well. So I'm going to pick up a brush to kind of bring some of these other feathery lines in. I need something a little bit smaller to do that. Here's a little number zero. Just gonna pick up the zero and I'm gonna start to paint 
some of these lines in that were a little faint. Give them a little more definition. They cross through. Need a little bit of oil to help them along. So if you're wondering what oil I'm using, I use a walnut oil because it does a yellow. I love the walnut oil. Also, the Charbon paints are made with the walnut oil, and so I really um, try to keep a consistency in between the uh, mediums that are inside of the paint and the mediums that I'm using in order to create. So I'm feeling pretty good about how this is coming out. I think in that dionized purple that I had, the darker one, I probably need to dip over there and, and grab uh, grab the tube because there, there's these uh, darker lines that are in there. Although this purple is doing okay, uh, kind of feel like, like that's what I need to help define even some of these things with the eyes as well. So we're going to keep going in here, bring that through. Painting with a zero brushes. You have to have a lot of patience because it's so tiny. Put it in the oil. These lines going through. I really want that purple, this pink, to start to blend. So I'm going to put a little more of that pink onto the palette. And then this kind of got wiped, so I need to wipe off my knife again. And we're now going to try and pull some of this pink. And uh, I'm going to use this uh, cold wax medium again. Put a little, pull some out. Oh, here's a nice clean palette knife. Make sure everything's clean when you're mixing. Oh yes, very nice. It's got a nice, it's a nice buttery consistency from this cold wax medium and it's actually helping me um, stretch this pink. So the reason why I'm wiping onto the screen, onto the canvas is because I, I want to mix more of this medium in here. And I don't, I wanted to clean up my knife a little bit so I can make more out of what I have. I probably should use the spoon if it, it would be good. It's coming out to a nice buttery consistency. That's it. Let's see. And we're going to use it all through here. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm going to put a little in here so that we can mix with that purple that's in there. So I'm just kind of like putting some clumps in, then I'm going to come back and work it. Alright, so now I've got a good texture going with that cold medium wax and this pink. And it's, it's not quite shiny yet, but I can always come back with a varnish to help shine it. You can also add your oil into it, like what I did down here with the blues. I can add in the walnut oil or the linseed oil in order to help it. Um, I want to get it into that smaller space there as well, so I'm going to pick up the brush and uh, do so. I really like how that pink was kind of popping through there and then I can come back with this um, this palette knife and uh, stretch it out. So I kind of clumped it in and now I'm gonna just kind of bring that back. Kind of beat it that eye. And usually the eyes kind of start to do 
They're not exactly straight around. The, the feathers don't exactly go straight around the eyes. So they kind of take a, a contour. And I'm very happy with how this is coming out. So I'm just going to keep stretching until we start seeing definition take place with the feathers. It's nice uh, how it's moving on. I kind of get used to the consistency. There we go. It definitely gives you a lot to work with texture-wise. So I'm very happy with this pink. Nice and bright. Just about how the sun was that day hitting it. It looks great against that blue. Just sitting there. Just gonna keep stretching. See, I have some strokes that are kind of flipping a little. Gonna keep moving. That looks good to me, and we had a little bit of blue that was showing through here, so I'm just going to let that kind of open itself back up a little. Um, hopefully I may pick up some with the brush. Here. As I was saying before, it's not quite straight off of the eye, it kind of flickers like little eyelashes, just like how our eyelashes are. I'm sure it's part of their protection mechanism so that nothing preys on them while they're performing their ritual dance there to mate with the ladies. It is the male peacocks that are the nice pretty color. I'm just gonna Softer. So I just gave it a little bit of blue around there. And then we're going to come down here to the pink area. Kind of pull that out a little back and forth in. There we go. So now we're kind of giving a roundness to this one down here, like lashes. And we also need to do something similar in here. We'll bring it down like a lash. And I need to clean up that little purple part that I'm now burying. So get that definition back. Still got some pink down there that I need to pull on, so I'm going to get the palette knife again. Bring that pink in. Drop a little. I'm very happy with this happening below here. And 
And so I'm trying to create a fullness inside of his uh, plumage. Really not trying to utilize the white, but just trying to get the eyelashes to come off the eyes and give a little more definition around these eye pieces themselves. So this is that darker orange that I mixed up earlier, which gives us a little little definition here, roundness to the eyes by hitting the darker color lower. Flash this one in. Make it sure it all blends. This is a green that's back here, so I like to pick up that green because I actually put that onto the palette itself. And I can see how it's appearing on the screen, so I'm still very happy with what's going on here. Um, cool thing about oil is that it takes a while for it to dry, so if you did think you made a mistake, you can wipe it out. It's a pain, but you can. I'm just going to bring this over top of that. Now we got a nice definition there. And then this is actually a blue, so I'm going to work a little more on that area. Um, see if I pick up a little more of this blue. And then what it does is it kind of comes to a point and it overflows into the next one. So this is the first one that we're able to get started this way. Here. And I'm liking the way that it's coming out here. And it's okay that it's coming over the top of the other one. And right now there's really no color on the brush. I'm just kind of pulling on the colors that are already there um, to pull out the lash definition. I'm trying to load the brush with any particular color. I'm just trying to use the colors that are already on board there to help me define what's happening inside this eye. So the thing is is that you kind of have to go every other eye and then come back and then get the other eyes otherwise you're tripping over each one so um, it's typically how I do it. I can start to pull this one a little bit. See to me that's not deep enough so I need I do need to load a little color in there. Maybe this this red will help us some. There we go. Nice deep red. Kind of dance in there. You see how it's blending very nice with the uh, that color at the top. So. Don't want to make mud. It's not the objective. That blue is very brilliant and I want to come back and make that actually work better for me. It's the same blue that's here but I want to make it bigger so we're not going to mess too much in this. this. It's actually a lot has been done today in this area. I don't like to see whites at all. I like to paint my whites in when I have whites. So I'm going to just kind of go around here. Some more in. Very happy with that. So I'm just gonna pull a little. And sometimes the feathers don't have to be necessarily made with the um, with the tool. The tool, I, the the um, palette knife. Palette knife ha helps with the definition, but you actually can kind of start the feather lines with the brush itself. 
those nice zero brushes helping us out there. I got a little bit of oil there to kind of help us. Cold wax medium is very nice though for this application. So we got pretty much a lot done here, and then I gotta finish filling in some more things. These I wanted to be a bright green, so let's start looking at what that would look like. We get another white for brushes here, clean them off, and um, I'm gonna try um, a bright green eye here and there. Can't see, so I need to turn it a little so you can see what I'm talking about. It's a very long piece, it's 40 by 80. Um, bright green may not look nice up here, dancing at the top. Uh, so I'm just kind of wiping all of the paint off of each of these brushes so that I can use them again. This is the one that we're using for kind of blending some stuff earlier off smaller brushes. When I did the original lines, it was big brushes. I'll set those down. And I really want to try, I'm thinking, a green gray in there. So, I'll try to use this one. And I actually pulled up a really nice bright green. Put that on the palette. And it's just the store brand's green, but it's a really nice green. There we go. So I'm going to try that for here. I want that to be this eye. And then in about, maybe about three days, we'll be able to paint the other portion of the eye without getting mud. I want this green to be pure, as pure as possible, and I'm kind of liking it. Because it's next to this orange, and then it's got that red going on, and I'm going to further define that eye. So I'm kind of liking that green. I'm going to give it here as well. So kind of like popping around just a little bit. So we went from purple to green, and then we may go from green to um, pink. Well, not pink because we have a lot of pink in the body of this, so maybe not pink. We'll try another color, complementary color to uh, the oranges and the uh, red family inside of here. I really like it when the eyes are not uniform. It's a pretty nice green. Great and green because um, it's got that nice dark beginning of an eye, that orange. Helps it a lot. really cool that you can view now from the web. Too bad you can't, haven't figured out how to give hearts with your art yet, but from the web, the web itself, uh, I think that's pretty cool. When I go live, you're able to hop on and see me live. And there we go. So one, two, three, green. Thinking. Maybe it dances over here. So we're actually coming towards the back area here. quite lovely to me. So that's a cool place. 
And then sometimes you got to stand back from it. So I think that's all I'm going to do with greens today. You need to actually stand back up off of the canvas itself so I can see how to make sure it all stays balanced. I love where those greens are going right now. And I'll be working on this painting till I get it done <laughs> so that it can go into that exhibition. It can be submitted for the exhibition called Big. Um, so since I'm here playing with greens and this is a green, this is that, that turquoise, I'm going to take a little bit of it and uh, stretch it out here. I'll go ahead and define this outer portion of the eye a little bit deeper. I'm loving what's going on with that color. Absolutely wonderful. And also here, it was with this kind of pinky peachy color. That's nice. So it's there, it's not quite here, um, but I could get some definition here with this, just to help it a little, nice. Now you can kind of see that it's there. That helps a lot. This is more of that purple, so I'm going to continue to work in on the purple, um, how the plumage just kind of flows, and then also work some, some of this stuff in here with the pink. Um, so we had the Carmen Lake, but I also have kind of like of a violet red to help us too. So the only way to use to get rich color is to use rich color. So we take a flat on this one and start to add it. If you hear somebody singing in the background, that would be Todd. <laughs> It's kind of almost like a purple, so I'm going to help it with this one that we just came and defined a little more. Came out nice. Happy with it. As you can see. And I'm going to bring it in here and this area. I don't want to see any white spots. This is lovely magenta to help me get the white spots out. The white spots, I want them to be delivered like little dances of light. Not because I, I missed. Okay, there we go. Get a little oil. Help me pull that some. I think the rest of the world is sleeping on a Sunday night, huh? Pick a little bit of that cold. And we 
want to get some of this filled in here. And this is really helping the um, underpainting. We're still at the underpainting stage with this. So we want to have nice colors underneath so that when we start pulling off eyes and scratching the surface, that wonderful color bounces out from below it. Conditioner went off. Okay, here. Now that I'm painting this, it's going to be forever in my dreams tonight, I'm sure. I can't quite see what's happening with this, but this is this darker color is really nice. It's fading into that brighter pink. I'm just going to keep kind of whisking this along. This has got a more purpley go thing going on there, so I'll give it a little bit of purple to help it out. It's a little oil. There we go. Nice. And I'm going to pick up a little more of that cold pink. I'm calling it a cold pink because I put a cold wax medium in with it to uh, get a texture. Pop a little bit of that in here as well. So I'm really happy with uh, the richness of the colors that are happening here. You can see this looks a little waxy in there, so I guess just kind of sitting there. So I'm going to pick up my palette knife and kind of help it along a little definition. Okay, well, I think we're done for the evening, so I'll see you soon. My name is Artist Yvette Michelle, and I am known as the Big Pick Lady, and we are working on my Roadrunner piece, and I look forward to you soon, seeing you very, very soon. Have a great evening. Thanks again for joining me on my journey in the art life. To follow me on social media, you can find me on Facebook, WordPress, LinkedIn, and House as Artist Yvette Michelle. Periscope, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest as Big Pick Lady. To purchase an original Yvette Michelle art, you can visit my website at www.yvette.com. M-I-C-H-E-L-E dot -E com. That's www.yvettemichelle dot com. Michelle with one L. Thanks and have a fantastic day. See you soon.